thank the the foundation for having me and it's it's great to be here uh in the presence of a lot of my mentors who uh motivated me to get into foot and ankle so it's a real honor to be speaking with them and people who have changed our field and, and really impacted patients lives so uh, very thankful to be on this panel uh so as uh, my talk is about end-stage ankle arthritis diffuser to replace so as dr amandola uh discussed he kind of did not want to talk about fusion or replacement. He was talking before that, but now we lead to kind of the end stage. And so what do we do? So um, let's see here. So the basics, uh, we've, we've had this talk a lot in the first weekend today, but we know that arthritis is really the inflammation of the joint leading to the loss of cartilage between uh, the bones, the bumper between the bones. And this cartilage is a connective tissue that coats our bones and provides a cushioning. The ankle, as Dr. Amendola just told us, um, you know, it's three bones, the tibia, the fibula, and the talus, and there's a lot of stability with the ligaments, and disruption of both of these factors is what leads to this arthritis. The ankle joint itself uh, functions in dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, and really has minimal inversion, eversion. That's the, the main function and the biomechanics of the ankle. I know Dr. Brodsky gave a great talk last week about the biomechanics, which is much more complex than that. Um, but we, we know it's a very complex joint. Um, normal ankles, we can see on the left, often you know has a good joint space. But as prior lectures have shown, and when we get this arthritic ankle, we, we lose that joint space. And that affects our mechanics, our gait, and, and leads to chronic pain. Um, Ankle arthritis, very interestingly enough, is much less common than the hip and knee. But I think the reason why we as foot and ankle surgeons are so passionate about it is because it's extremely disabling and it's becoming much more common. Uh, the, uh, it is equivalent to kidney disease or advanced heart disease. So these patients really suffer. It really affects their quality of life. And because a lot of times it's related to post-traumatic arthritis as um, our prior lectures have shown, uh, it, it's occurring in a lot younger patients. And so we need to continually innovate and find good solutions for these uh, patients where hip and knee arthritis tends to, to happen in our older population. So ankle arthritis, as we know, uh, primarily in the hip and knee, it's very common to be wear and tear. Uh, but in the ankle, that's very uncommon it's oftentimes post-traumatic. So we have a wide spectrum of patients from very young patients to, to the elderly who have ankle arthritis, and that affects the treatments we can do. Also chronic ankle instability, the ligamentous structures that balance the ankle, as Dr. Amendola just showed, patients with instability, chronic instability, can lead to various types of ankle arthritis. And then inflammatory arthritis as well, those with rheumatoid uh, arthritis or lupus, et cetera. So, Common presentations of the ankle arthritis are uh, pain with weight bearing, altered gait, uh, shorter stride, uh, leg externally rotated, uh, which can lead to then further problems in the knee, the hip, and the back. Uh, often stiffness in the morning, stiffness throughout the day, and night pain, especially when it gets advanced. And these are all problems that lead to arthritis being very debilitating. I think on exam for us, it's very important when we examine patients and for me, as my talk is uh, how to you know, fuse or replace, part of this is in the exam. Uh, we need to assess for swelling and tenderness, and then certain factors, the range of motion of the ankle, the range of motion of the other joints, the subtalar joint, the transverse tarsal joints are important, especially for me in deciding options for the patient. Are they a good candidate for an ankle fusion or are they a good candidate for an ankle replacement or both? Deformity, this is also very important because Oftentimes, sometimes there'll be an intrinsic deformity in the ankle, or it may be higher up in the tibia or even in higher up in the knee. And sometimes we have to correct these deformities at the same time while we do a fusion or a uh, replacement or a stage process. And then obviously seeing the patient walk uh, is important, looking at their gait and their biomechanics, as well as adjacent joint arthritis, which I think I'll allude to later, uh, plays into my decision of what to do. So we, we've gone over, over non-operative intervention quite a bit, uh, but for me, it's activity modification, shoe wear modification, anti-inflammatories, icing, steroid injection, and braces. 
And just as we discussed today, and Dr. Amendola mentioned, orthotics, uh, uh, my prosthetist, uh, bracing is, is a huge role in non-operative foot and ankle surgery and in ankle arthritis. Uh, I have many patients who are too sick to undergo surgery, and these modalities can really help them get by and improve their quality of life and their function, or they may not need anything. However, when these uh, interventions fail, we do have very good operative interventions for these end-stage uh, ankle arthritis, and we've gone over some other type of interventions, arthroscopy, debridements, uh, biologic resurfacing. But in terms of fusion and replacement, this is often what we're considering when we have full ankle arthritis in the entirety of the ankle and end stage. And these other modalities uh, will not provide the relief or the outcomes that uh, we desire and our patients desire. So what is an ankle fusion? Where uh, Ankle fusion is where we actually remove the remainder of the cartilage within the uh, ankle joint and weld those bones together. And we weld them together um, uh, to build basically one bone. That uh, will eliminate the motion in the joint and essentially uh, eliminate the pain. Uh, for this, we'll talk about later, you know, also our patients who have arthritic ankles due to uh, neuropathic ankles, significant stiffness, if they have arthritis in other joints. So if they have arthritis or no, excuse me, no arthritis in other joints, uh, because we know that if the, in all the joints around the talus become fused or arthritic, these patients do very poorly. Um, history of prior infection that may preclude an ankle replacement, significant bone loss, sometimes patient preference. And, and we are dealing with, and, and I think this is a, a big area of research, which I'll talk about later, is ankle, arthritis is often post-traumatic. And so we have a lot, especially I think everybody's seeing a lot younger patients with this disease process. And as our ankle replacements get better, our indications expand, but in significant, in very young patients, uh, sometimes an ankle fusion is a very good option despite its limitations. Um, the benefits of an ankle fusion are, it, it, if it heals, it can last a very long time, but the negatives are, we lose our motion. We have altered gait mechanics. We have a, We can get adjacent joint arthritis, and oftentimes it's a longer recovery. However, this is a very good surgery. I do it all the time. Um, patients who have good subtalar and transverse tarsal range motions do very well, live a very active lifestyle, and are, are very happy. Um, traditional ankle fusions often have a larger incision. They're done with combination of screws and plates. And this is just an, another example of a, a post-traumatic ankle fusion uh, I fixed with screws who, who did very well uh, post-op. Um, however, our ankle fusions have become more advanced. Uh, we've been able to do this through smaller incisions. Our implants have come better. We can do this now arthroscopically in certain cases, especially those that don't have much deformity. Um, and we can correct these through minimally invasive approaches. And again, uh, in, in this case as well, we have our orthobiologics, so our stem cells, our PRP, bone marrow aspirate, uh, certain uh, other uh, biologics uh, that are synthetic have are getting better, and this can help improve our fusion rates and improve our outcomes in our patients. So ankle replacement. So ankle replacements, uh, you know, this is where we actually, just like the hip or the knee, replace the joint with metal implants and a spacer. Uh, oftentimes there's a, our indications for these, these implants are getting better and better, but in general, we look for somewhat of an older population, um, especially if there's adjacent joint arthritis, you know, like I said, we, a very stiff foot when everything is arthritic around the, the talus, this can be problematic. So, uh, in patients who have subtalar arthritis, talonavicular arthritis, even if it's early, I, I, I hope that I try to do an ankle replacement in these patients good range of motion, more active. I think with a, the ankle replacement, patients now can get back to hiking, swimming, um, golf, uh, high pace walking, um, and even some jogging. Uh, impact sports are still a little difficult, but these patients can be very active and oftentimes they like to maintain their motion so they can maintain these type of activities. Uh, obviously good bone stock and sometimes, um, you know, patient preference. However, with all my patients, I, I go into a deep informed consent about the risk and benefits of these 
both fusion and total ankle replacement. And we make a team decision often based off various these various factors. I believe that the benefits of uh, total ankle is it maintains motion. We have a lot of gait analysis showing better uh, gait mechanics can protect uh, uh, adjacent joints from progressing to arthritis in those adjacent joints and oftentimes a faster recovery. However, another area which I think the purpose of this conference is, you know, is, is shelf life, the longevity. Uh, these implants are getting better and better, uh, but, you know, our longevity of them is, is still around 15 to 20 years where the hip and the knee can be, you know, 25 to 30 years. So we need to continue to advance this research so we can get uh, these implants are primary implants lasting longer. Uh, for our, you know, the history of ankle replacements, as I alluded to, uh, uh, they're much better than they were. The early generations had higher failure rates. They lacked anatomic reconstruction and our technology was at not, just not there. However, as we advanced, our, these implants have become significantly better for multiple reasons. The anatomy is matched better to improve gait and biomechanics, as well as we've been able to remove less bone, which preserves the anatomy, allows for revision cases to happen, and can lead us to being able to revise these implants without having to do a big uh, a fusion, which is, I think, has really allowed us to advance our indications and the patients that can receive these implants and has allowed for them to last longer and our, and our gait to be better. Another advancement that we've done over the last, last several years is uh, preoperative planning. In my opinion, this has really changed the game in total ankles because we're able to dial in our correction, our sagittal coronal alignment, um, and better balance uh, the, the total ankle replacement. Uh, this allows us to predict the size of the implant and anticipate surgical challenges. And these are just examples of some of my uh, cases that we've been able to uh, sample reports that just show we are able to really improve um, our pre-op planning and our position of our replacement, which our alignment and getting this implant in the correct sagittal and coronal plane have shown to improve the longevity of these implants. Along with this is the 3D printed guides that come with this. This is to improve our efficiency, surgical time less, improve the reproducibility. If we can decrease the variability and improve the reproducibility, we're gonna do a better surgery. It's about reps. And if we can do this more accurately, more precisely every time, our, our implants are gonna go in better and they're gonna last longer. And I believe this is what's been shown to improve outcomes. Also our materials are better. So again, more research. Our materials are better. They allow for better bony ingrowth. They last longer and this improves stability. We've also, in, in the hip and the knee, there's great revision systems. We, we lack that in the ankle, but now with our technology, replacing the replacement has been better. So we have better revision options now. Uh, this allows us to improve the longevity of the total ankle in general because we have a revision system. We can have better functional outcomes and we can theoretically avoid complex fusions that we know sometimes have poor outcomes in these patients. So advancements in total ankles has the better anatomy, better planning, better technology, better materials, better revisions has allowed us to advance uh, doing this in more patients and I think improve our outcomes. But this is the research has driven this um, field and has really uh, made this beneficial to our patients. However, just like the last talk, I think we're still on a long road. I think there's a lot more research that needs to be done and I think we can make these implants better. So how do I put all these pieces together. Well, in general, uh, uh, for a uh, total ankle, you know, I'm looking at patients' age. I tend to do this in slightly patients who are 55 and up. If they have adjacent joint arthritis, I really would like to do a total ankle and then to, to preserve uh, the motion in the ankle and minimize the stresses on the other joint, especially if they're going to need another fusion. Relatively good range of motion. It's not a hard rule, but I like trying to preserve that range motion to give them that function and allow them to maintain that motion and the activities they like to do. More active patients. Again, I don't think that's a hard rule, but my patients who like to golf, uh, walk, hike, swim, I think this is a great option for them to maintain that motion. And, and there's been literature to show that they, patients' uh, outcomes and perceived outcomes are better in these cases as well. 
personal choice. Some people want it and informed consent, obviously speaking with a patient about the risk and benefits of this. Fusions, oftentimes younger post-traumatic patients. Uh, I think sometimes I, again, have informed discussion with these patients, but if they're really young, sometimes the longevity of the ankle is just not there yet. But I hope with future research, we can get these implants lasting longer. The neuropathic ankle, prior infection, poor bone stock. If you just don't have bone stock for a total ankle, it's not going to work. And so I think these patients do great with effusion and any other contraindication to total ankle replacement. Um, I do think that total ankle replacement in our field, these are some of my happiest patients that I have. Um, and I think we are driving it in the right direction because our patients, uh, uh, I think we showed on those first slides that ankle arthritis is severely debilitating. It's, it causes a lot of morbidity. So these replacements really improve these patients' quality of life and, and, and really advance uh, their lifestyle. So I think also our research is really important in this field. And I know we can make it better because we've already got this far in such a short time. So longevity of the implants, biomechanics, revision systems, patient-specific implants, uh, and indications for patients, I think are all areas of research that we continue to strive for and continue to uh, focus on that's going to make our treatment of ankle arthritis, both with fusions and replacement, that much better to improve our patient's quality of life. So um, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.